the topic this morning is coordinate reference systems and uh, not necessarily their uh, inherent interest for others than uh, cartographers and geodeticists. Um, to a certain extent, applied mathematicians, because it goes back to, to the history of, uh, of applied mathematics, and some of the considerations of the shape of the globe and distances on a sphere go back uh, over a thousand years to, to Al Karismi, uh, who managed to establish the correct direction of Mecca, which otherwise will. The, the assumption now is that you look at a map and it looks like a Mercator map and it looks plainer and say you go from Washington DC to Mecca going southeast, the actual direction to go the shortest way to Mecca is actually 50 de 58 degrees, not more than 90. So that the, the we've understood a good deal about the shape of the Earth and how to represent position and distance on the Earth for more than a thousand years, and also going back to to uh, to uh, the classical antiquity. Uh, that's not mentioning other civilizations, uh, as as for instance in China, where there was also a good understanding of the representation of the globe um, and India. Now, yesterday I was talking about the, the spatial data representation, and so that now we're on session three. So first, a little background, then uh, the issues which have arisen in the modernization of the PROJ library and uh, propositions, for, uh, for, um, propositions for meeting the, the challenges which we now see. So I'll check to see whether there's there's anybody on, there's no comments have come in so far. Okay, good. Uh, if you were dealing with time series and you were attempting to use two data sets together, but you didn't know which time zones they were observed in, you might get a bit stuck by simply assuming that they were observed in UTC or GMT. As they may be, but they may not be. As anybody who's called somebody somewhere else in the world and realize uh, <laughs> it's the middle of the night there, this is the same kind of thing. So that we need a register, a framework, for knowing where or when we are in relation to other wheres and whens. And coordinate reference systems give us this particularly in relation to spatial position. But as we'll see, there's a relationship to, to time, to the epoch, when observations were made in addition to that. Um, if we need to use spatial data, we very often need to use spatial data from different sources and then having access to, uh, access to data from uh, those sources, if we want to connect the data sets together, will be uh, crucially defined by knowledge of the coordinate reference systems. If we guess that we know what they are and we get it wrong, we'll be off. We may be a long way off, we may not be very far off, but we'll be, be off by a certain extent. Uh, we could express a uh, coordinate reference system as being, uh, talk about coordinate reference systems as being uh, uh, geographic. So a geographic coordinate reference system is one which is usually defined in decimal degrees. It could be defined in degrees, minutes, and decimal seconds, but usually now in decimal degrees. The alternative is to consider a projected coordinate reference system which transfers the spherical or uh, ellipsoidal geographical coordinate reference system to a reference plane. Uh, in the US, many of the states have independent, or the, some of them have two or three or four state planes. As the idea that was that surveyors would survey using the state plane, but at the joint, say, in a county which, or sorry, in a state which where the counties extend east-west, there might be several different 
uh, state planes. Um, UTM, has anybody met a UTM? Some of you have met UTMs, Universe Transverse Mercator. A very similar system was used in the Warsaw Pact, but in NATO, uh, the Universal Transverse Mercator was considered as being a, a reasonable way of permitting uh, armed forces from different traditions or different mapping traditions uh, to work together so that when they were deciding on uh, movements, targets, whatever, they would be talking about the same place. As it's a bit stupid giving someone a coordinate reference for an attack and then hitting a neighboring building, which is what happened in, in Belgrade in 1999. Uh, but thinking about uh, coordinate reference systems and maps, we have to consider that many of them have come from military sources. In, in many cases, the first uh, national mapping agencies were associated with, with defense uh, or war ministries. Um, this isn't in itself a problem, but uh, it, 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 it also leads, in some cases, to the uh, precise definitions of the coordinate reference systems being state secrets. This is the case in, in uh, still the case in India. Uh, when we want to look at a coordinate reference system, a geographical coordinate, coordinate reference system, we need first to define the ellipsoid, uh, which is being used. And the ellipsoid will have an associated major and minor axis lengths. Uh, these axis lengths have been estimated with surprisingly good precision or prior to the, the existence of, of, uh, of satellite, satellite measurement. With satellite measurement, you can get very good ranging, so distant, both distances and, and uh, the use of time to generate distances. Uh, so that we've only really had a good feel for the shape of the ellipsoid the globe on which we live, uh, since since the, the late 70s, early 80s. Um, prior to that, all of the observations were made uh, from the surface of the, of the globe, which obviously means that, that it really is quite difficult to get a good measure of the of the, the length of the of the axes or the, the length of the major axis and the flattening. Uh, uh, the ellipsoids are very often named after particular surveyors, or they may be named after particular international standards. Uh, and there are quite a lot of them. Uh, so that if, if we want to start sort of jumping in and seeing where we were when our spatial began, uh, everybody in free software, with essentially no exception, used the PROJ library. The PROJ library was originally written by Gerald Evenden for the USGS and was for, uh, um, to, to quite a large extent, was intended to standardize the mathematics as similar work done by a Russian mathematician cartographer, uh, to standardize the descriptions of all of the projections. But the projections then have to be based on knowing what the geographical coordinate reference system, and then how do you move from that geographical coordinate reference system to a planar representation? So that if you were going to use, say, UTM as Universal Transverse Mercator as a planar representation for a particular zone, say Zone 25 South, uh, which is used in, in eastern Brazil, you could do that, but then you could choose different ellipsoids, and the different ellipsoids would, would give you a different placing of where things were. They wouldn't be very different, but they would be, they, they would be, uh, they would be slightly different. In, in the, the uh, PROJ system, which is uh, accessed in the SP, uh, 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 the, 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 the original representation of spatial data classes, which you'll remember from yesterday, always have a PROJ4 string slot. So PROJ, PROJ4, PROJ4 string slot. All spatial objects have, have, this, have this slot in, in that version. In the SF world, SF and stars, they have a, a small letters CRS um, um, component, which is part of each SF object. It's an attribute of the, of the SF object. 
and within these, then we can look up the uh, the, the, the the tag is 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 shortened from ellipsoid to uh, elps, so that they will have an elps tag. And the names of these include merit SGS eighty five GRS uh, eighty, which is quite commonly used and immediately preceded the World Geographic uh, Ge Geodetic uh, System of 1984 and is essentially the same. You can see here these values here. Um, major axis is uh, 6,378,137 meters. And if we, if, we, if we scroll down to uh, to WGS84, it's the same value, and the the, the flattening is 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 uh, this is uh, the last uh, six digits at two two three five six three, and if we go back up here, the flattening factor is slightly different. So there's a slightly different flattening. You could say our Antarctica has melted a bit. But it wasn't that. It was, it was a slightly different calculation based on on, on satellite, uh, satellite measurements. So there are quite a lot of these. There's the AERI, modified AERI, the Danish, the Australian SA, uh, the GRS-67, the one which preceded GRS-80. And all of these differ just a little. Bessel, which is quite often used in, in continental Europe, Clark 66, Clark 80, these are 1866 and 1880, used in North America. Uh, some of the most dramatic are the, the, the Everest. They were made by the, the uh, Imperial Ordnance Survey in India in the 19th century. And the idea was that if you could get, on, you could get as close as you could to Everest and some other peak, then, then you could get a... You could you could really get a good triangulation on 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 where you were. Uh, helmet is quite uh, quite often used. Crass the international ellip, uh, uh, ellipsoid, and so on and so on. So that there's a whole there's a whole um, uh, industrial archaeology of uh, ellipsoids and their definitions. And ellipsoids are, they're, they're just saying what shape we think the, 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 the globe is. Um, other parameters which you would need to define a geographical, uh, geographical uh, uh, coordinate reference system would be the prime meridian. And uh, of course, Paris is the true prime meridian. It's not Greenwich. <laughs> So that if you're using French maps, say, even from the 1970s, they're using Paris as the prime meridian. Uh, in Spain, then maybe you get Cadiz. And most of the larger former imperial countries had their own prime meridians, which run... Uh, in Norway, the prime meridian is a stone outside the office of the, of the mapping agency in the centre of Oslo, close to the palace. So that if you're in Oslo, go behind the former building of Norges Geografisk Opmåling and find the stone. Uh, and it has a number of of of, of scratches on it. So well, they're, they're the it's bronze, so that they're bronze lines which are drawn in. So you have a corrected level of me. So it's now either seventeen point something or seventeen point something else above the mean sea level in the harbour. And that's, that's marked as being the base sort of Z level. And X and Y are given that, that obviously X is going to be zero at that point, and Y is then some distance north of the, north of the equator. Um, and almost all mapping agencies have these kinds of uh, archaeological artefacts uh, defining the way that they saw the world. Um, legacy proj, but this was the proj which existed in the mid and late 1990s and used by open source software, um, had begun to start using a datum tag. And it's the datum tag which is the one which causes the problem. Now, the difficulty is not so much that we have a, 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 a 
worldwide global definition of the ellipsoid. That's fine. We can manage that mathematically. It's not too much of a problem to do so project from a known ellipsoid. The problems which started arising were that in addition to the ellipsoid, you really also need to define a datum. And the datum is then not the shape of the ellipsoid as such, but it's related to the, uh, to the uh, geodetic representation of the whole globe in three dimensions. So you're not looking at the ellipsoid as a surface, but you're looking at it as a solid. And you're then concerned with the relationship between the local mean sea level and the geodetic center of the globe. Where there are local uh, distortions. Um, how much do you know about uh, uh, seismic studies? Do so you think that they're used by the oil industry? But actually they're used a lot in crustal studies of the globe because parts of the cr crust are thinner than others and parts are thicker. So that you may think of the globe as a regular ellipsoid with the parameters we've just looked at, which you can pick and choose and say, well, I want an area, no, I'll have an international. But it's not quite like that. It's much more like a potato. Potatoes are not regular ellipsoids. So that at places where the crust is floating up, then actually mean sea level there is not necessarily where you'd expect it to be somewhere else. So the, 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 the relative density of the crust is also having an impact on this. So that, that for instance, studies of isostasis after the ice age in Scandinavia uh, are showing changes of perhaps a, uh, a meter per hundred years in, in where the, the sea level is observed to be. So that mapping agencies, in addition to establishing the, 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 the regular parameters that they wanted, they also adopted a, a datum. This started to, to, be, uh, to, to be institutionalized in many of these organizations in the, in the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, many of them uh, many of them uh, have have an extremely. I, I find it totally fascinating. It's a column in uh, uh, photogrammetric engineering and and remote sensing by Clifford Mounier. Uh, he's written uh, lots of these. There's there's a there's a data set in the Argoodal package giving the uh, months and years of publication of his. Um, a geodetic archaeology of trying to find the descriptions of the datums which are used by different mapping agencies going back uh, through, through, through time. Uh, and one which, which I, uh, I recall, uh, but I haven't checked, so it may be completely my imagination, uh, is that the datum used on the Faroe Islands was found on a piece of paper behind a filing, a written in pencil on a piece of paper behind the filing cabinet in Copenhagen at his insistence. So that people working in the Danish mapping agency went in and said, well, well where, where do we, how do we actually know the way that we're trying to represent our datum? And they found it. They established what, the, why they'd done the maps the way they did them. Now, Some of the ways that you can you can handle the uh, the datum is by saying, okay, so we have a shift from the value which would be observed at level zero on the ellipsoid, but we need to shift it a bit in different parts of the map. And in North America, they tended to deal with with this by handling uh, by using a grid. There are grids for Canada. There's a grid for the continental. Uh, um, uh, continental US called CONUS, the CONUS grid. It's, it's quite a small grid, it's, but it, it works. So the, it, it gives an adjustment to show you how uneven the potato is with regard to the, to the ellipsoid. Others do it through, uh, through having a national average. So that for, for the UK, uh, the, the Ordnance Survey, for, for, uh, for most of the UK, certainly England and Wales, they use a, a uh, um, uh, um, an oceanographic station in Cornwall, which, which that's the zero point, and then there, all the other heights are re referred to that rather than anything else. Um, now, 
once we got satellites, we also got the World Geodetic System of 1984, which was both an ellipsoid, so it's an ellipsoid, that's great, but it's also a datum, so that it provides, if, the, if a satellite is looking at the globe, and it says, on average, this is what we've got, so that it's an average shape, uh, uh, saying where mean sea, sea level is in relation to the, uh, to the ellipsoid. Obviously, for most local cases, it's not a terribly good fit, but you could move from any other datum to WGS84 or from WGS84 back to some other datum in geographical coordinates without particular difficulty if you knew how to do it. One of the ways to do this was through a grid. The other way was to provide either three coefficients or seven coefficients uh, to uh, to convert from one to the other. So that in addition to the introduction of a datum tag, a 2WGS84 uh, tag was also introduced into the description of geographical coordinate, uh, coordinate reference systems in PROJ to provide a place to put these coefficient values. With three, you get a slightly poorer uh, adaptation. With seven, you get a better, more precise, more accurate uh, conversion. You, it's actually called a transformation from one to another. Uh, and the way that PROJ uh, was programmed to handle this was that if you needed to undertake a datum transformation, say from airy to international, then you would, sorry, from those are ellipsoid, from, uh, from one datum to another. So say for the uh, ED50 datum, which was used in, in much of Europe, but which was many different datums, for ED50 in Norway to uh, um, the OSGB36 datum in the UK, then you needed two WGS84, uh, the two WGS84 tag. So you've got the datum tag and the two WGS84 tags, and they were a way of handling the problem of uh, adapting different systems one to another. So the grids and datums column gives you uh, an awful lot of sort of background of, 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 uh, of, of how this happened historically, and it is it, for people with a particular... Uh, a particular need to use historical data. Sometimes the, the grids and datums columns are the only ways of getting back to a uh, well-referenced, uh, reliable description of how maps were made then. So grids and datums. So that if we look, say, up uh, Norway, we can uh, pull up two different uh, two different uh, um, issues. One from October 1999 and then an update in July of 2017, both of them covering the Kingdom of Norway. As you're aware, Norway also includes a number of bits and pieces outside, like uh, Spitsbergen uh, and, and um, Björneia and so on and so forth. So th there are other things going on there, uh, and all of these have, 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 have their own, have their own uh, details. Another, not specifically Norwegian, but associated with our local context uh, in, in, in Western Norway, is the uh, coming into being of the uh, European Petroleum Survey Group. The European Petroleum Survey Group came into being before there were any international standards for uh, uh, geographical coordinate reference systems, not to mention projected coordinate reference systems so that, that each mapping agency did things the way they wanted to do them with the exception of military alliances. And military alliances needed to have coordinated um, systems of mapping so that they didn't shoot themselves. So that you, you, you limited the number of uh, friendly fire uh, incidents. So EPSG, the European Petroleum Survey Group, came into being in the late 1950s when it was impossible to find out which, where the boundary should go, the median line should go between uh, the Netherlands, the UK, and then further north in the North Sea. Because if you extended the planar terrestrial maps from either side when they were using different datums, nobody knew how to match them. And the people with a 
a, 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 a visceral interest in finding out which parts of the oil and gas reserves were belonged to which country were the petroleum industry. So European Petroleum Survey Group was uh, 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 an industry group formed by surveyors working for oil companies who said, the national governments don't seem to be able to do this, so we'd better do it for them. And many of the key players who, as there's a, a, a very influential man called Roger Lott, uh, who's worked for Shell, he's worked for EPSG, he's been instrumental in, in, in uh, helping other people to realise that they need international standards for these kinds of things, and writes textbooks about it. So that a lot of this is actually driven by a completely pragmatic need for surveyors to know where median lines actually are uh, in the North Sea. Of course, when you extend that to other... Uh, other domains, say the, the Gulf of Mexico or other waters where it's important to know which parts of which oil and gas fields belong to who. Uh, so the, the, it's, it's still called the EPSG. It, it's not just European, it, it's worldwide. Uh, what happened in you know, the way that uh, uh, Proj and Google uh, handled the EPSG database was to make a copy as a, a comma-separated value file, uh, which was shipped with Proj and Google. So Google had its own copy. And sometimes the versions of EPSG were a bit newer in Proj and a bit older in Google, but they were more or less the same. But critically, the definitions were homogenous to the extent that EPSG was confident that it was willing to assert its authority, and the authority term is one which has become uh, very important, uh, to the definitions. So the definitions were given with the authority of somebody, so that if you were an oil company and you wanted to go to court with another oil company because you thought that they were sucking out your gas, then you needed to have an authority to say, who is it who decided that the formulae which should be used or the coefficients which should be used for the datum transformation of this? And the EPSG said, okay, we're from lots of different oil companies, so we don't have an interest in this. We'll use our best insights to say that the, 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 the three coefficient or seven coefficient set of coordinates or the grid which we should be using is this one. This is the one we accept, arbitrary, but the authority of the EPSG. So the EPSG was seen as being an informal uh, standards-asserting organization before there were standards. But it, that it was, it was based on, on pragmatics rather than... And, and also the fact that the surveyors were really good at their jobs, so they knew what they were doing. Uh, and they, they might have problems with the legal department because the legal department said, well, if you slack off on that coefficient, we could get another, uh, an, another couple of million barrels... <laughs> So they say, no, no, we don't do that. Next, next time we're negotiating about the coefficients, then another company is going to push us the other way because we, 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 we overstepped the mark here. We have, to, we have to agree in the committee about how we do this. So the European Petroleum Survey Group asserts authority but also deserves respect for the work that they've, they've done on this. So that, for instance, if you, if you copy out the, the EPSG, the current EPSG uh, database shipped with, uh, with Proj, with uh, make underscore EPSG, that copies out all of the, the, all of the uh, coordinate reference systems that it knows, both geographical and projected, for uh, Oslo. Uh, then you get the NGO Oslo uh, 1948, which is a geographical coordinate reference system, and then the derived projected coordinate reference systems, which are transverse Mercator on this. So that if we then say in the uh, uh, SP system, ask well, what, is, what is contained uh, in uh, EPS, EPSG code uh, 4817, that's this one, it's a geographical coordinates. This is the, uh, one of the parameters for the ellipsoid. This is the second parameter for the ellipsoid. The uh, prime meridian is in Oslo, and then we're not using any default values. So this is what we know. 
unfortunately, and this then prefigures what we got onto in a moment, is that uh, before Proj 6, and I'm running Proj 6, datum was respected. And 2WGS84 uh, was respected. They were used in Proj. It's, it's really sort of Proj now rather than Proj 4. But from the beginning up to the end of Proj 5, the datum tag and the 2WGS84 tags worked. However, uh, since I've up to, this is, I'm now running this using unreleased code, is development code. Unfortunately, in Proj 6, the datum tag has been, um, has been uh, deprecated. Uh, it's actually defunct. So it's dropped. It's, it's, it's not used in the proj4 string representation. This is a proj4 string representation. You've got a plus, the name of the tag, and the value. A plus, the name of the tag, and the value. Plus, name of the tag, and the value. Plus, name of the tag, and the value. And this way of looking at coordinate reference systems has been, has been sort of a completely no-brainer until March this year. That it was simply the easiest way to represent coordinate reference systems, and everybody did it. Uh, Grass did it, QGIS did it, everybody did it, despite the fact that there was a pre existing uh, international standard called well known text for coordinate reference systems, um, uh, ISO 19111, but which different companies implemented in different ways. It was a sort of a it was a very movable feast. You weren't quite sure what you were going to get with the, with the well-known text representation. So that if we went, say, to, to, to uh, prior to Proj 6, we could look up uh, the, the, uh, the 2WGS84 2 2 value, which in the case in the, in the, 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 the case of the, of the uh, Norwegian um, datum which was used would take uh, these seven values. So these are the seven values. That there's the shift in the x, y, z, and then uh, 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 three, three, three other coordinates in. So you can see the, these these are the ones with substantial uh, values. So this is almost a kilometer difference in in the in in the z di di direction, and then 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 the other the other values. Sorry, this was seven, so it's, it's eight meters, not 800 meters. Uh, in the new version of PROJ, you can ask, how would we conduct this coordinate operation to move from one uh, representation of a datum to a different representation of a datum? And when we ask the, 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 the database now, then we can see that these are the values that we're getting out. We're using a helmet uh, uh, transformation with with the same values that we saw there. So the values are still in the database, but they're not exposed in the proj4 string. That's the, the plus tag equals something. Those are now not as uh, um, robust in the sense that if we use them, we know that it's going to work out right. So up to and including Proj 5, the downstream software, which then includes uh, SF and our Google, Google, Grass, QGIS, everybody. Uh, those of you who are using QGIS, which version are you using? Are you using the released version? I, I would guess that it's the released version. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But, but, but the, the, the development version of QGIS now when you... Yep, the, the stable run rather than the, the, the aspirational. Yep, yep. But the, 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 the very newest one, the one which isn't released, but which you, if you build it yourself, you can, you can get it. And others now uh, provides the same kind of access to, to how do you look up uh, the, in this case, it's asking, how would I convert from the Norwegian 1948 representation of a, co a geographical coordinate reference system with, with its own datum. So it's e uh, 
a, a version of ED50 to WGS84. And this would this this would be the the, the 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 way of doing it, and the same kind of thing comes up now as a, as a as a big picture in 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 QGIS in the the unreleased version. So up and uh, up to and including Proj five, uh, software like SF and our Google has been able to rely on the, this provision of ad hoc transformation capabilities the ones using the plus datum and plus two WGS84 capabilities. And we've been able to expect that it works predictably. Uh, I've uh, noted here that they're ad hoc because with each successive iteration of the EPSG database, the uh, coefficient values in the uh, two WGS84 string may be refined so that you may get more decimal points, more digits after the decimal point uh, coming in. Um, so by and large, people have sort of relied on things, things, thing, things, uh, things, things working. What is a, C a CRS object? A CRS object in SP has been a, a, uh, an S4 class with a character string, and those have been the proj arguments. That's the plus proj equals, and then the plus elps equals, and, and so on. So that was the way it was defined, and, and that's the way it's worked up until now. Uh, SF uses an S3 small CRS, to differentiate from the large CRS object, with either an in, uh, integer EPSG code, or a proj string, or sometimes both. So that if it's instantiated using the EPSG code, then, then uh, you're good to go, because you get both of them, uh, as we see here. So that if we say, OK, so we'll, what, what's, what, what do we get if we instantiate a CRS object in SF with, uh, with um, uh, EPSG 4326, uh, which is the if you like the uh, WGS84 ellipsoid, the WGS84 datum, and geographical coordinates with the prime meridian at Greenwich, which is sort of the default is, is Greenwich. So that this is this is this is, this is where we where we go there. However, Proj, as I've said, was originally written just for projection, transformation came in somewhat later as a sort of add-on because people needed it and because the EPSG database was, were, was, was available. Um, no, still OK. The EPSG database was available. However, uh, 1984 was quite a long time ago, and many mapping agencies have uh, issued revisions of the WGS84. They've said that since we defined where we were, then not only are we seeing horizontal shifts uh, related to earthquakes and the movement of the tectonic plates, but we're also seeing shifts in Z, which is also because, because of the fact that uh, crustal movement is not only across the surface of the Earth, but different bits of the crust are not only moving sideways, but they're also moving up and down. Uh, and so that things are not the way they were 35 years ago. So that in, in a, a key uh, paper by uh, Evers and Knudsen in 2017, there's another one by Knudsen and Evers in the same year, they, 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 they made the case for, uh, for changing Proj. There were a number of things which they wanted to change, and their key idea, which I initially thought was, why are they doing this to me before I retire? So just to retire and don't, don't, don't do this to me. But it's a really good idea. It's the idea is that everybody, or many, many uh, software, uh, software uh, applications, including uh, R-Spatial, use the proj library 
But if we use the Proj library, we don't necessarily have to use the legacy view of how we handle transformations. And uh, Evers and Knudsen are geodesicists. So that they said, okay, so what we actually need now is uh, to step, up, step back. Okay. In, in the 1980s, if you were within even 50 meters, for most mapping applications, didn't make a great deal of difference. 100 meters didn't, didn't make a great deal of difference. If you're in the military, it made a difference. But outside the military, it did not make a great deal of difference. 35 years later, we have precision agriculture. We were talking yesterday before you went home. Uh, and precision agriculture, maybe we need 10 centimeters, 20 we do need. So it makes a difference. So if, if you've got your um, precisely calculated uh, fertilizer dose, which is being put on the soil, which is actually nutrient rich, that's not a good idea. So precise should be precise. Uh, and how do you do this if the software is not up to doing precise? Uh, another point which, was, uh, which, 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 was, which they made was that they saw a, a sweet spot uh, and, and they're quite right, because so many people use PROJ, so that if you change PROJ, then suddenly everybody who uses PROJ gets much more precise transformations. They may not, know, they may not have known that they wanted them, but they get them. And, and, and it's sort of no extra effort. And suddenly you're rolling out systems where uh, lots of people will benefit in the future from access to free-to-air, no problem, high-precision uh, transformations. Good. So that's what, what one contemporarily would call the pitch for, uh, for changing PROJ. One of the things that they wanted to do was to escape from the WGS84 hub. If you wanted to transform from one datum to another, then you, in Proj, you always transformed to WGS84 and then out again. Now, the description that they, that they gave for this was, uh, is also called early binding, but it's like doing a regression. So you're trying to predict um, C from A. But before you do that, so the econometricians would be like instrumental variables, you've got an in, in intermediate variable called B, so you predict B from A, and then you predict C from B. So you've got two sources of error. So each transformation introduces an error, so that in moving from one datum to another, you're going to be in, in trouble unless the target datum is WGS84, and then it's, it, you're do, only doing one anyway. Beyond that, um, it's, it's not just to do with WGS84. If you chose, chose any other hub, you'd have the same problem of going two legs when you could go one, to go uh, from one set of coordinates to another set of coordinates ac across a datum, datum transformation. Uh, this, is, this is from uh, Martin uh, Des, uh, Des Russo. Russo. Uh, he, he comment, commented uh, in a, in a mail, mailing list post, I think if a hub had existed where transformations are exact, we would have heard about it. So it doesn't exist. So the, the switch has been from early binding using the, the WGS84 hub to late binding, which means that there's no uh, unique route from one representation to another. There will be a menu of routes and they will vary in accuracy, and they will also vary in relevance depending on the epoch, which is when the coordinates were uh, observed. So that which of the routes, pipelines, that you choose to go from one representation to another will vary depending on when the data were observed. Access to information. It may be that a mapping agency has really first class coefficient values, but he doesn't release them. Or, which is where the action is now, 
mapping agencies have grids, which are also keyed in time, so that for one particular time, then you uh, so for, for 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 a particular set of transformations between older data and newer data, you'd use one grid. Between slightly less old data and newer data, you'd use a different grid. This is Australia, New Zealand. There are, there are lots of these different grids which can, can be chosen. And they give you submeter accuracy. So the idea of the grids is to give, give you a, as good a fit as you can get. If you're in precision agriculture, in, in construction, engineering, all of these kinds of fields, you, you want to make sure that, that people are doing things properly and not, not messing up. So, uh, the way that uh, the way that Martin understood the uh, the and the the ISO International Standard uh, nineteen one eleven, it iterates. So there's an iteration for two, it's called uh, uh, two thousand eighteen. It actually came out at the beginning of this year. What they appear to be proposing is forget about hubs. Don't don't never use hubs. Always look for a way of transforming directly from source to target. So going from source to target directly, but you need to be able to look up a catalog of possible operations for doing this. Now the operations will also vary not only with the epoch, but they'll also vary with the area of interest. As if you ju if you don't say which part of the world you're in then you may get hundreds of candidate operations, which will be, many of which will have very similar accuracy. Uh, so you probably also need to, to, to dis disclose the, the, the area, of, uh, area of, uh, of interest. And in a recent exchange with uh, Evan Rohr, who's done much of the implementation of this and is an ex excellent, uh, very uh, devoted and, and uh, conscientious uh, uh, person. Uh, he also has uh, a um, uh, and a completely appropriate approach to proprietary uh, software, which uses work that he's done when they don't feed back, uh, don't contribute. Uh, but if if you look for, for for his work, then 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 I'm sure you'll find it find it interesting. So that this one of the points is that WGS. Uh, 84 as a hub is gone, despite the fact that lots of systems use WGS 84 as the, the root geographical coordinate reference system. The datum is simply it, it's simply uh, in Norwegian you say utkot podato. It, it all that the mapping agencies are all making their local adaptations, and instead of doing that, it'd be better to avoid trying to. To, to, to spread yourself all over and just do it, do it once properly. Have a catalog of operations, search for the operations, and, and there you are. So coordinate uh, operations are important. And in addition to that, it's very useful to know the area of interest and the epoch. Uh, and indeed, Martin suggests that we, we, we shouldn't just stop with, with the coordinate reference system, but we need to go for the epoch. And as I mentioned yesterday, some geodeticists would like for each point which we observe to associate a date and time. Uh, no, I don't think anybody's going going there uh, because it would it would uh, it would undermine almost all of the data representations which we're using. But if at least we can associate the coordinate reference system of a data set with an epoch, assuming that all of the points in the data set were observed at the same time, then then we should we should be more or less okay. So, um, one of the warning bells uh, which which I noticed was that um, we run, or I run, or my desktop runs all of the code in uh, the Astar books, the two, first and second edition, all of it's run every night. And I expected to see some changes occurring around the switch between Proj 5 and Pro, Proj 6, but I haven't picked up all of it. And it doesn't 
trap all of the differences because some of them are, uh, are shown as figures rather than tabula. And some of them I just missed. But as time has gone on, I've sort of realized that oh, oh. So there was a section in, in chapter four demonstrating the, the difference between ED50 and WGS84 in terms of datums uh, outside the entrance to the port leading into Amsterdam. And they'd flipped uh, up, up until the end of Proj 5. Uh, there was 125 meters between the two representations. And I hadn't noticed that it had gone to zero. Because the datum had gone away. Uh, the actual shock came somewhat somewhat later, which I'll, I'll, I'll go into in, in, in a moment as, as the, the actual example that I'm using. But um, So one of the things which I've done consistently and uh, hope that other people also do is if you use upstream software, track their mailing list, track their, see what, what's going on in those communities because you're crucially dependent on... Uh, knowing ahead of time what's likely to happen or if it's being implemented in a prototype way, then you can try things out. This was such a large change that we weren't able to do that. But we have a grace period from March uh, 2019 to March 2020 when Proj 6 becomes Proj 7 and the possibility of, of still pretending to be in the old world goes away. I also had an, uh, an article in 2004, there's a uh, handbook uh, chapter uh, on uh, open source uh, geospatial software stacks. And quite a lot of this is related to, to software stacks. But in the case of Proj, Proj is itself, Proj is used by Google, Proj is used by uh, all of the open source uh, GIS. When we use Google, that also has kick on effects. Because when we read in data, then we're also reading in the coordinate reference system of the data set that we're reading. And if Google uses Proj, and Proj has said that datums are not a good idea, then, then suddenly you're reading in data which is not registered in the way that it would have been previously. Um, so... We're faced with fairly large changes in, 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 in Proj. The current view appears to be that uh, the well-known text representation for uh, coordinate reference systems, the WKT1, defined in the international standard originally from 2004, is no longer adequate. There was an iteration in 2015 uh, but Proj is now adop adopting the w WKT2 of 2018, which was actually uh, published as an international standard at the beginning of this year, uh, because it, it, it um, creates a canonical representation where everything which is defined has to have an authority, and the authority has to have an entry in the EPSG database. So if you want a definition of a degree a definition of a meter, a definition of a US surveyor's foot, they all have to be in the database and it has to be with an authority. So that everywhere you look, everything gets, gives you an authority. Uh, the ProjDB file is a, an SQLite uh, database, so we can look inside how Proj6 and subsequently is now going to represent all of this, and it's represented as a, an a, a fairly large and complicated set of database tables. The database tables, as provided by uh, EPSG, are available online. You can search online and do various things online. Uh, EPSG is also a subscriber organization, although they've been very open source and open access friendly. Uh, but the, the kinds of things which you see here, are, uh, uh, the areas which are, which are accessible, authority lists, authority to authority preference. Which authority do we give um, preference if we have two authorities for the same the definition of the same thing? If there are two different definitions of the same thing, which authority publisher do we trust more? Uh, the axis, the celestial body, the compound CRS, concatenated operation, conversion, conversion method, conversion parameters, conversion table... 
coordinate operation method called Brev, a CRS view, geodetic CRS, geodetic datum, grid alternatives, blah, 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 blah. prime meridian, there's even a table of prime meridians. So that there are uh, a, a fair number of tables which represent the current EPSG database at the next iteration of the database. Some of these, uh, some of these entries will be updated. And this, this works pretty well. But one of the things uh, which I haven't mentioned so far very much are grid alternatives, grid packages, and grid transformation. And it's the grids which are the, the, the next step now. Uh, the uh, funding of this for spatialists to carry out work on this was so it's crowdfunded, but mostly from industry. Um, <coughs> Uh, is the grid CDN mechanism. Uh, none of you are responsible for large labs. No. Because I, I have appealed for managers in large labs to respond to the, uh, to the um, request for comments. There's a draft request for comments document published by, uh, by um, the PROJ community. Uh, asking for comments on creating a CDN, uh, sorry, TLA, CDN, a content distribution network. Now, a content distribution network lives in the cloud and on the fly provides you with the parts of grids that you need to do the transformation you want to do. Up until now, or the current situation is that if you find a situation where you could do a more accurate transformation, but you don't have the grid on your computer, then you get a, a message that if you want a more accurate, then please download it and install it in a place where you probably don't have right access. And so it's, it's, it, it re requires manual intervention. Manual intervention is probably okay for quite a lot of large labs who want to standardize the versions of the grids that they're using. So they will roll out a particular set of grids which they mandate people working on project in that lab to use. And that I think is quite okay. So I, that was what I wanted to hear back from them is that we don't want to use the CDN. We want to fix lab policy that we're using these grids. But up until now, most of the labs have just been takers. They've just said, okay, we're getting two WGS84 values coming from somewhere, from Proj, we don't care. It'll be okay. But now that mechanism is, is being deprecated, which means that it's being removed from service. And so that now you're going to be forced <laughs> to raise your game. Uh, and the labs probably need to look at, this, look at this fairly carefully. So that up until now, Proj metadata files have been stored in a, in a fixed directory. And for many users, this is a directory where they don't have write access. Uh, for me, I have write access because I, I compile myself and can fix things. But there will be a lot of users who don't have write access to this. So there's a problem of how to handle this. One of the ideas is, say, to have um, uh, a, a a known location in, say, in Windows, it would be in where user data is for each particular user. But this is somewhat inefficient on multi-user systems where uh, potentially different applications are downloading multiple copies of, and some of the grids are big. So for Australia, you're, you're looking at grids which are in the 125 mega size. Comments on the, on the proj list have said that well, nobody worries about 125 mega anymore. And that might be true. But some of the applications are used in, in, in cell phones. And you really don't know whether we want a gigabyte of grid cells, of grid files for the whole world in everybody's, in, in each of the apps using it in everybody's cell phones. So probably they, they wouldn't, probably people wouldn't need it because most people just, just you get Web Mercator and that's it. Or you get uh, Google Earth Engine and that's it. Uh, Web Mercator is, 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 a, is a dreadful uh, way of handling data, if, if you ask me, but that's my personal opinion. Um, 
so that so w at this point we're not quite sure where 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 this is where this is where this is going to go Uh, a change which was made by Evers and Knudsen was to say that transformation should be defined not as a, uh, a 2WGS84 and out again, but they wanted them defined as a transformation pipeline. And the transformation pipeline concept appears to be uh, robust and has now uh, been, been implemented for, for, from Proj 5, so that from, uh, from um, uh, March 2018 and in development versions before that again. So that from, from during 2017, the first code was introduced and the code was then modified during the uh, Goodall barn raising during 2018 by Evan Rouen. Uh, so we now have lots of choices which we didn't have before, uh, things like the area of interest and so on and so forth and finding the, which pathways, which pipelines uh, should be instantiated uh, does vary. So what was the CRS status before Goodall 3 and Proj 6? Um, in SP, we used a Proj 4 string representations, simplified key value form. Keys began with a plus, and the value format depended on the key. So it could be a string, or it could be a string of numbers. Uh, if essential keys were missing, they might be added by default, and in particular, the ELPS would be added, and the default ELPS was, was WGS84, so that if you just said long LAT or UTM something, then it would assume that you were using a, a WGS84 ELPS. This has been done away with as well. Um, one of the points at which this began to bite was uh, when the leaflet package emerged uh, on which uh, map view and the view mode of tmap they became possible because leaflet was there now what leaflet does is to move data which are in a geographical coordinates and wgs84 datum that's the one that we're moving away from but treating it as a standard so that you so that input data is seen as having to be that, and it is then uh, uh, converted on the fly to uh, the web Mercator projection, which is not WGS84 ellipsoid, it's a spherical ellipsoid, so that it, it's a sphere, because that makes the computation easier, but with some of the qualities of WGS84. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, not very well thought out. Also led to a clash on the border between Nicaragua and one of its neighbors uh, because they were using Google Maps to try and work out where the border was so they let a military exercise run over into the neighbor. Um, so that's, that's one of the benefits of, of Web Mercator. Uh, this is EPSG uh, 3857 and led to a lot of discussion in the committee because EPSG really felt that, that it shouldn't be used. If you, nobody works for the US military, if you work for the US military, expect to be degraded if you use Web Mercator. You may not be dismissed in dishonor, but you will be dis degraded. You're not allowed to use Web Mercator. And think, think that you're responsible for a cruise missile. It will not land where you want it to if you're using Web Mercator. It will be equally destructive, but destruct destructive uh, in some other form. So, uh, in order to use map view and the view mode of Tmap, we need to present leaflet with w, uh, geographical coordinates WGS84. But we then need to know how to get to that. And from Project 6, we, we then have, have, have an issue. So, okay. Uh, in... In the, the books, in chapter four, there's been an example since, since forever of the SOHO cholera data set, uh, which I mentioned briefly, briefly uh, yesterday. And this involves the, the positioning of the Broad Street uh, pump. And it also involves the positioning of the, uh, of the buildings. Now, when I rushed through it 
or it's in the materials from yesterday, it didn't really matter where they were because we were just looking at metres uh, around the buildings that we were buffering out the road so that we could provide a least cost path between each of the houses where there were mortalities and, and um, each of the pumps. However, we read in, uh, we read in uh, the, uh, the building's geo package and we read it in. Oh, okay, okay. It it has no EPSG code, and it's a, a it's it's a transverse mercator, and this is the the uh, principal the central line of latitude, the central line of longitude is is uh, is two uh, west, two degrees west. Um, it's uh, Greenwich Prime Meridian. These are these are other features of the so that we're offsetting. Uh, X by uh, 400,000 meters and we're offsetting Y by minus uh, 100,000 meters, 100 kilometers. It's an airy ellipse, uh, ellipsoid, units are in meters. And off we go. Okay, and this is the kind of thing that you do, okay, you're having class and you say, off we go. And, and the buildings just drop nicely onto the street map. Proj 6, what happens? They're not dropping nicely onto the street map. Help! What's happened? So that, this, this, this should just drop nicely onto the street map, and it's not. It's, 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 it, it, it's not. It's off. So that this crossroad should be there. Why? What's gone wrong? Now, here I've turned off the warning, but in my development version of SP, it says that when what is read in from the vector file suffers degradation of the datum description, the file contains the datum description, the, the SRS, spatial reference system, coordinate reference system, inside Google contained the datum representation, but it is not exported to PROJ4. So it's not exported to the PROJ string. This might be taken as being slightly brutal. Uh, however, I think Evan made the right call uh, on this. So, so open up the, 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 the uh, spatial reference system definition in the geo package. So I'm now looking inside the geo package to see that the datum was there. And it says it's a geographical coordinate reference system, uh, a geographical coordinates re reference system, OSGB of 1936. And its datum is OSGB 1936. So that it was in the file, but in trying to represent it as a PROJ4 string, the datum has been dropped. Uh, in this case, silently, although in the in, in, in the work that I'm doing, it now shouts. It says, I had a datum when I was read in, and I don't have a datum anymore. Uh, we're trying to work out how many times we need to shout at people, or sort of weep at them. I've lost my datum. <laughs> Where's my datum? And my, 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 my dear 2WGS84, which I've lived with so happily for 35 years, it's all gone away. So, um, What's now happening, um, sorry, this was, this was read in using SF, so there are, there's no shouting at you there. Here you get the shouting at you. Okay, so it may even repeat it several times. It's a warning in uh, OS, uh, uh, OGR spatial ref, uh, discarded datum o, uh, OSGB in 1936 in the CRS definition. So that on the SP side, where we only have the, the PROJ4 string as the representation, so we're stuck. So that we, have, we have a representation which, which is not, not going, to, not going to, 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 to be robust from PROJ, from uh, Google 3 and PROJ 6. So these are the these are the, the these are the ones which we've read in from. Th this was the one we read in with SF, 
and this this one we are reading in buildings one is read in in the SP representation. And the proj4 string of this, it doesn't have the plus datum. Prior, prior to this, it would have had the plus datum, or in some representations for raster data, which prefer 2WGS84 instead of plus datum, you would have had the 2WGS84. And in fact, Frank Warmadam uh, wrote a proto blog that was of a blog before blogs existed uh, about 10 years ago, saying, Guys, we have a problem <laughs> with datums and 2WGS84. So that in Google, when you're reading in rasters, unless you choose otherwise, datums are always replaced by their 2WGS84 representations in the proj, proj string. So that we have we have the the uh, the, the, the same problem with map view. So because we don't have datum in the coordinate reference system representation, map view says, okay, you want to move to, you've got a different ellipsoid. Okay, you're on an area ellipsoid, but not the WGS84 ellipsoid, so I can do that. But I don't know what datum you have, so I must assume that you're already in WGS84. So I don't need to do any shifting because the datum is, is already the, what do I know? It says quite correctly. So we get this 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 weird shift for things which had worked for fifteen years, and suddenly it they weren't as precise fifteen years ago, but they weren't bad. This is this is bad. This is this is a regression, uh, but it's it's a deserved regression. You 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 could say that why are Google and Proj doing this to us? But what they're actually doing is saying, raise your game. The, 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 the approach to doing transformations up to now was okay quite close to 1984, but it's not okay anymore. You've got to raise your game. So what do we do? Raise our game. So if we're reading in from a shapefile, we got the same. So the datum is defined as as OSGB 1936. We're all okay there. This you will not see as a problem in ArcGIS. ArcGIS has an excellent projection manager, but ArcGIS were actually the largest monetary contributors. They paid $30,000 to the Spatialist's Google barn raising. So they're also on board in terms of support for open source software and some of their engineers make helpful comments as well so that it's not that they're saying if you pay for our license which is a not in substantial amount of money uh, you're safe if you go with those open source people they're, they're all sort of sweaty long hair guys who yeah no they don't they don't they did that 20 years ago they don't do it anymore they're a member of the R consortium s3 is a member of the R consortium so what are the proposals? So the changes taking place are the use of transformation pipelines to represent coordinate operations. The pipelines, there may be many candidates, can vary by area of interest, accuracy of transformation, availability of grids, and possibly also by epoch. A second component is the representation of the coordinate reference system. If we're going to use uh, proj strings and go through Google, then we fall foul of the decision taken responsibly and sensibly within Google that the C++ function export to proj4 drops plus datum and may in the future drop plus NAD grids and plus, uh, uh, plus 2WGS84. So that all those three uh, components, which are essential for doing data and transformation using the proj4 string representation of coordinate reference system, will likely have gone away. Third component is adding area of interest and epoch to the WKT2 underscore 2018 version of ISO 
19111. So that the forward-looking representation of coordinate reference system appears to be WKT2 2018, because that representation also includes the epoch, and it, it may include the epoch if the epoch is known, and it may include the area of interest if the area of interest is known. So that when you're instantiating a coordinate operation using WKT2 2018 to define the coordinate reference system, we should be not future proof, but we're not as vulnerable as we would be if we said we're using proj4 strings because everybody does that. Now, it, that's not the case that everybody's doing it. Uh, QGIS is moving forward, GRASS is moving forward. Uh, PyProj uh, was faced with almost identical issues and looking at their code, it was, it was very helpful because, because you could see the way that they were also thinking. So everybody's faced with this problem of how do you move away from a, a legacy representation which has been enormously successful and has propagated worldwide. So it really works. It, it's worked for everybody since it, since it came into being. It's, propag it's everywhere. But how do we now raise our game uh, going forward? So I have a, a fork of SP. The, S, the, uh, the development of SP is run from a GitHub repository which Ed Sepepsma is responsible for. I have a fork of that. And on my fork, uh, there's a uh, the, the, the current version there, which is uh, 133. And the development version of Google on RForge uh, have been changed to adapt to uh, the future. What we're trying to do is to create a situation where if you're using proj less than six and Google less than three, things carry on, so if it's business as usual. So it will carry on using the existing systems. Because for reproducible research, that would be what you would expect. If you're using Google three or more and proj six or more, it should shift to the new representation of coordinate reference systems. If you're in the strange situation which some Debian users were for a period of having Proj 6 and Google 2 and Google 3 is matched with Proj 6 and Google 2 isn't. Google 2 is matched with Proj 5 or Proj 4. Uh, then we, had, we need to handle that as well. I, I did suggest saying that you're not allowed to install that, but it does turn out that, that because other uh, upstream data pack, package, uh, package maintainers wanted to go with the newest, um, newest proj, but didn't realize that it would have a knock-on with a backwards incompatible Google, so that they've stuck with sort of one leg out here and the other leg out there, so they're on Proj 6 and Google 2, which don't really play together well, so we, we need to warn people not to do that. So, the current proposal, and it, it was also followed up on, uh, on Friday evening, um, uh, Ed Sepepsma commented on an issue on uh, the SF uh, GitHub repository saying that he had a, a WKT2 branch of SF, which also does the same thing, that it introduces a third, as you'll recall from here, that at the moment uh, a, a CRS object in SF has two components, and from his new development branch, you get a third component, which is a WKT2, and we'll then pack in the WKT2 string. The WKT2 string, unlike the proj string, which is a sort of one-liner, uh, WKT2 
2018 strings are a one pager. So you're looking at 30 to 40 lines of text. Not nice, but what can one do? Okay, so in SF, because it's using S3 classes, there are no problems for backwards compatibility in extending a class, so that in a list, and the CRS object is a list, the little CRS in SF is a list, if you, if you try to read an absent list component, you get null back. So you just say, give me WKT2, which is either the value it should have, or null. And if it's null, then you have to fall back on, on one of the other values. So, so far, so good. With the S4 representation, if I add a slot to the big C, big R, big S object, SP will stop being backwards compatible because any frozen file, and has, has anybody used um, uh, GDAM? Uh, this is a database of administrative boundaries kept by the maintainer of the raster package, Robert Hemans, but it, it's worldwide. So that if you need down to county boundaries for any country in the world, then you go to uh, gdam.org uh, and you can download those, but you can also download load them as RDA or RDS R objects, which you just load into Suck them in, load them in. You don't need to read them using using Google or anything. You just suck them in. At which point, uh, if SP was not backwards compatible, it would say, bang. You have an invalid coordinate reference system object. Bang. Not, not, gonna, not going to read this. So we can't do that. So we can't add a slot to the uh, big C, big R, big S object. However, we can use the um, uh, really bad hack of adding a comment. Comments have existed since probably before S3, certainly since the beginning of R, as a way of attaching a comment to an object. And comments also work for S4 objects in that they're invisible to the class structure, but they are there. Uh, so that what now happens if you read in a file, say the, uh, the building file, in the new version of Argoodle and SP is that uh, the Argoodle, so th this is then read OGR, says, okay, so I read the geometries, that's fine. I want to read the what uh, uh, Google calls the SRS, spatial reference system, quadrant reference system, and pass this through to the CRS instantiation function in SP, which goes back to Argoodle and says, okay, if I'm in the new setting, so Google three or more and Proj six or more, then in addition to doing what I always do, I take the WKT2 underscore 2018 representation and put it in a comment. So having read this in now, I can say, okay. So what's the comment? And the comment is, that, I mean, this isn't formatted because it's it's just the way it, the way it flows in. There are no spaces, there are no no new lines or anything like that. Uh, so that if if we if we look at if we look at what's going on here, uh, this is this is uh, EPSG two seven seven zero zero, which is the 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 uh, OSGB uh, thirty six. So it's it's the uh, OSGB transverse Mercator. So if we, if we just read it in like that and put it in O, then we get a warning that, the, the, that we've lost our datum definition. The datum definition has gone away from the proj string. However, the comment, the, the WKT2 payload, as I'm calling it here, is safe. So that despite the fact that the proj string is degraded, the information is secure. In, in, in this form. Uh, and 
looking at the at the at the actual uh, at the actual uh, representation here this is this is harder to to look at but if we split it up uh, across lines uh, using a new function in our google show srid and then start it off with the proj string so we're saying okay we want you to show us what's in the proj string and we want the default as the the default format of the output here is wkt2 uh, underscore 2018. So this is the whole page version. So it's a projected coordinate reference system, OSGB uh, 1936, British National Grid. The base geographic coordinate reference system is OSGB 1936. The datum is OSGB 1936. The ellipsoid is area. The aerial unit is meter. The prime meridian is Greenwich. The angular unit is in the degree. Its ID is 4277, and the conversion is to the British National Grid. So we've now got lots of things which you'll remember as the num names of the tables. You've got uh, datum tables and uh, geographical coordinate reference system tables and conversion tables and uh, unit tables and, and, and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. So conversion, as it then gives us the... the um, uh, all of the, these kinds of things. It then also says that the scope is unknown, so it doesn't know the temporal scope, but it does know the area of reference, uh, which is, is, is this, this, this bounding box, which it, which it prefers to use for the, for, for, for the area. Uh, this is the area of reference for the, for, for the declared. The bounding box is a little tighter. If we wanted to show the same thing in proj string format, we again get the discarded datum. So that the way forward appears to be for SF to attach a WKT2 2018 component to the little c, little r, little s object. And for, uh, for the SP track, where we have uh, uh, SP and our Google have uh, towards five, 500 packages which depend on their representation so that it's not just it's not just a hobby as there are lots of people's work that depends on this we think we can now see a route to providing consistency going forward when uh, proj and Google move to Google 3 and future and Proj 6 and future that we can do it by by making the these adaptations uh, the function which is called then is that instead of calling uh, check CRS args which was the old function we now ch call check CR, uh, CRS args ng in our Google uh, which is using the new function show srid uh, which it will then it will then step uh, out to if where it needs to do so uh, using so this is this is then the function definition from what it's trying to do uh, to get hold of the uh, of the value to pass back to be inserted as a comment so that the code is fairly tr transparent for what it's for what it's trying 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 to do uh, there are a number of uh, smaller oddities uh, which you can um, some proj, some legacy proj strings begin with a space and things like that. So the, we've had to try and adapt for, for things like that as well. Um, this is an example of what happens if you don't accommodate uh, backwards compatibility. But but now it's okay. But when I tried this example previously, before I'd I'd uh, m made the the or when I was thinking of, okay, I just add a slot and I'll be done. Uh, this 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 attempt to read in uh, to read in the the uh, the data failed, but you can see here that in the same way that in SF, if you ask of a CRS object what is your uh, WKT2 component, it either has the component or is null. With the comment, it's the same. Either you have the comment or you don't. There's no automatic way to update these. That if you don't have the component, then you're going to run into, you're potentially going to run into difficulties, uh, and it's a matter then of providing warnings for people who are, who are involved in that. Or once we've stabilised the system, uh, updating GADM 
and other sources, but we don't know what uh, stored objects different labs have, so that even if we fix GAD, that there may be labs who have sets of, of county boundaries or sets of, of uh, census tract boundaries going back, legacy boundaries, which, which they've got canned as uh, RDS or RDA objects. So this is this is um, uh, this this was reading in Norway from uh, from Gadam uh, at the at the zero levels. It's, it's just got a, a simple set of of, of boundaries. Uh, it hasn't got a comment. We could regenerate the coordinate reference uh, system for this, uh, and O now has a comment. So this would be a, a, a route to updating it. Would be to reassign the coordinate reference system. Proj4 string of NOR is now the new object with the updated with the updated comment. Say that we wanted to go from the uh, the uh, proj4 string of uh, buildings. You remember that buildings had a deficient proj4 string. In order to question the list of coordinate operations, we need to add the new key which has existed since Proj 5. Type, so plus type is CRS. What we're asking for is going from that definition of a coordinate reference system to EPSG uh, 4326. And we found one operation which works and this is this is where the, the the alarm bells should be ringing. If the only if the best instantiable operation has only ballpark accuracy, you know that you're in trouble. This is going to be plus or minus hundred meters, which is which is what, what what we were seeing there. If we use the WKT comment, it's taking the it's, what we were doing here was simply taking the Proj4 string. If we use the comment, we get seven operations. Uh, this, is, this is a description of the, the source, the target. Uh, the best instantiable operation now has an accuracy of two meters, and it's the inverse of unnamed because the, 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 um, the, the comment didn't have a, wasn't using the name uh, for it. Uh, and uh, don't ask me to talk about axis orders. Uh, axis orders also in EPSG are not always X, Y. Sometimes they're Y, X. Latitude, longitude. Uh, some standards impose that, others don't. Most GISs and our present preference is to say that we 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 want uh, we want the so-called GIS or visualization view, which is that we want x to be the first coordinate and y to be the second coordinate predictably. We don't want them flipping. It's the best instantiable description is is doing this. It's defining a pipeline. The first step is an inverse transverse mercator. Then we're doing a. a cartographic the airy step and then we've got a helmet transformation with these coefficients and we're done we've got to go from uh, from from uh, uh, radians to, to degrees on the way out however it does mention that op operation six is lacking one grid with an accuracy of one meters so that if we actually had this grid installed where Proj could find it we'd be getting Double the accuracy. This one is actually open access, and it's packaged uh, in uh, by Proj itself, so that for now one would download that zip file, unpack the zip file, take the single grid file, and put it in the appropriate location. Uh, that seems clunky, and uh, you you actually do need to know about Proj to handle that properly. Previously, Google had its own lists, but from Google 3, Google 3 simply looks at the proj lists. It doesn't look at its own lists, with some very small exceptions. So how could we, how could we now handle this 
adequately. And what is happening in SP transform, which is the Argudal function or SP function for doing uh, transformations. What's happening is that if we're in Google 3 and Project 6 and a comment is available on the coordinate reference system so that the WKT2 representation is available, it will use that and not the project string. So SP transform then takes the in this case, it will prefer to take the, the WKT2 representation, WKT2 2018 representation. This one will be fine. And does the transformation to, to uh, geographical coordinates. It also stores internally in a cache the last coordinate operation. And this is the, the pipeline for the last coordinate operation because it would be possible to say we want to transform this to this using this pipeline. So you can give the pipeline as well. And if you, use, if you give the pipeline, then it will use the pipeline. We just say, okay, we, we know what the pipeline is. The lookup for the pipeline is it takes a certain amount of time, especially if there are many alternatives. Uh, so that it's possible, say, say that you've got a whole set of files and you're going to make exactly the same transformation for them. You can do it once with one file and then reuse the definition of the coordinate operation which that operation uh, has generated. Uh, we haven't completely thought through this, but okay. So what we would expect now is that since we've, we've made the conversion to... Uh, to um, Uh, a, geogra a, geographical, uh, a geographical coordinate reference system, the one which is expected by leaflet coming in, so that it means that for map view, because, it, because the object we're looking at now has the input coordinate reference system is the same one as it would need for the output, so it doesn't need to do anything to it, so it doesn't do anything to it, and we get the we get now the correct placings so that Oxford Street ends up on Oxford Street and not somewhere else, and so on. So we then end up with things being where 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 they where they where they should be. So if we go back to the Broad Street pump, which I was mentioning yesterday, we read it in. Uh, this is then on the S. P and R Goodall route, so using, uh, using uh, read OGR. We get the warnings about the discarded datum. Another warning about the discarded datum. And another warning about the discarded datum. So several. There's one of them is generated uh, when the uh, geo package file is scanned first to work out what we're dealing with, and the next one when it's actually when it's actually read in. So this is it's unnecessary, but you, you get sort of lots of warnings like that. If we look at the comment on the on the proj4 string, that would be that that's that's what we need. So the wkt2 underscore 2018 is now in place as it should be. So the untreated view. So if we if we use SF before the uh, WKT2 branch, so the current released SF gives you gives you this representation of uh, the come on yep This is the pump. Uh, before the adaptation to Proj uh, 6 and Google 3, that's what you get. However, if we, ahead of time, uh, map view is using SF, released SF to do the transformation from the 
declared coordinate reference system to, uh, to geographical coordinates to WGS 84 datum. Uh, if we do it the other way around, by doing this ourselves first and hoping that the internet is a bit a wee bit faster and changing to OpenStreetMap we could zoom out a bit but so we're now well we had two meter accuracy right so two meter accuracy we're on so it looks as though where we are at the moment with the uh, with the comments on the big C, big R, big S in SP-based workflows functions and the equivalent in SF is available in the WKT2 branch. There's a note at the end, uh, as we're almost almost done. The note at the end is that many packages, 10, 15, 20, 25, maybe 50, try to do comparisons to see whether coordinate reference systems are the same. Using verbatim proj strings now means that when you upgrade proj and Google, to Google three or more and Proj six or more. The Proj string rendered by that combination of upstream libraries will be different from the way it was for Proj five and Google two and earlier, which means that you get spurious non-identities because simply checking that the the, the, the character strings are identical, it just won't work. And checking to see that the WKT2 2018 versions are character identical, that it's a whole page of text. It's not a good idea. As you could be off by a, a comma, a space, which wouldn't make any difference. So we, we still need to go back and look at how to uh, make available tools for doing comparisons between coordinate reference systems, both in SF and in, in the SP world. Uh, so far, I think I've issued about uh, 30 issues or emails, issues on GitHub, and in addition to that, emails to package maintainers who are affected by, by this. But there are quite a lot who are affected by, uh, by comparison for checking coordinate reference system equivalents. And this hasn't been resolved yet. But we do feel at this point that we're making progress and uh, hopefully uh, I, I really don't know when these will be released but we hope, hope to have them out um, before March next year. That would be a, a reasonable target because that becomes the point at which if Proj 7 is released in March, 1st of March 2020, that will not have any facilities for using the previous approaches. Uh, and we're already seeing some of the software providers moving, moving towards uh, certainly implementing the new, new pathways and pipelines and so on. What remains is the, is the, is the uh, content delivery network. So one of, one of the things which has been taken up in the con content delivery network is that if, if you're in a government lab, do you want arbitrary binary objects appearing from the internet? As it turns out that, that nobody had thought that uh, uh, datum shift grids, horizontal and vertical shift grids, could be used as an attack vector. But obviously they could. Anything which comes from the internet could be used as an attack vector. Uh, so that there are a whole series of security issues, not just securing the server, but making sure that the payload is is appropriately stamped and and so on, so that you know that what you, what you receive was what was sent and it hasn't been tampered with on 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 route from the from from the cloud. So the, there's still a good deal to do. It'll be done in in Google and Proj. 
uh, and we hope uh, probably to roll that out sometime later so that the that, that the moment we're going to be stuck in a situation where uh, where both SF the SF workflows and SP workflows will be able to handle Google 3 Proj 6 and going forward but installing the grids will be uh, manual so that the grids will have to be installed manually and we'll try and find a way of doing that so that the user can declare a directory within which Proj should look for the for the grids but that that's 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 ad hoc. It's not a it's not a, a, a robust solution. The CDN will be a robust solution, but uh, there will be uh, use contexts where you don't really want to have uh, uh, multiple uh, researchers or analysts um, using potentially different versions of grids. So let's say that you're in a in a in a regulatory context. Um, if if there still is an EPA after the next uh, US election, we don't know, we can hope. Maybe they won't need to do any analyses because none of their uh, results are used anyway by the uh, administration. But people like EPA uh, in Europe, the same the Joint Research Centre, uh, in, in multiple administrations uh, across Europe, they they do use these the, these these kinds of workflows, not necessarily with R, but with 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 Python, with with QGIS and, and uh, um, Grass and and uh, Saga and so on and so forth. Um, and having control of which grids are being used will 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 be important. Okay, so I'll I'll begin to to wrap that up. I'll see if any comments have come in. No, there are. There are no comments on Slido. So I'll conclude this session now. I hope this hasn't been too scary. Uh, but what I'm, I've had two goals. One is to um, make it relatively certain that coordinate reference systems are fairly present in your consciousness and uh, that you need to be aware of possibly ongoing changes which impact your your, your, your workflows and the other was to, to give some feedback on uh, ongoing work sort of completely within the R spatial uh, uh, community uh, to try to, 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 to keep, keep things running uh, at least uh, in uh, as accurate a way as they have done uh, until very uh, until very recently, so we're very concerned to make sure that people's workflows don't silently degrade, in the way that we've observed with the examples from 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 our book, which which degraded silently. We didn't. It wasn't obvious uh, that thing, things were happening, and it was actually only when I pulled up uh, in a completely different context and said, "Well, okay, in the book, then we've just got a printed copy of the Broad Street data, and let's have a look at it in Map View because that must be fun." And it was anything but fun. Um, but now it's it. We hope we hope to restore normal service uh, fairly soon, and probably given given indications from from SF, uh, this this is this is this is also it's going to have, it's going to apply to SP and SF workflows, but it will require vigilance from uh, maintainers of packages which use either SF or uh, SP and our Google for doing uh, uh, datum transformation, and even simply for representing data where maybe the package maintainer doesn't do datum transformation, but where the users of the package do that as part of their workflows. So that's part of a generalized uh, ecology of, uh, of the workflows involved. Okay, uh, are there any comments before I turn off the st streaming? They don't have to be, as, as, as this has been sort of, uh, and this is what has been absorbing me since August. <laughs>